The brothers, the brothers, the brothers. What are we talking about today? Remakes. Yes. Remakes that need to happen. There's been so many remakes recently. I mean, they've been happening for years, really, but I feel like there's been so many and and talk of a lot more and rumors of remakes that may or may not even happen. Everyone's getting excited about remakes, but let's talk about it. Well, mm -hmm. what I want to... So I recently watched a video by uh, Rerez. I don't know if you watch Rerez's channel. He has a channel called Hot Takes, uh, which is a really great channel. He did a whole video on Nintendo games that they want to see remade. And I got so fired up on this because I disagreed with almost everything that they said. Um, most of their wanted remakes were games like F-Zero, A Link to the Past, Minish Cap, Mario All-Stars. Those games are so... Not only are they super playable today, mm -hmm. they don't have broken controls or anything like that, yeah. but they're so accessible and affordable in 2019. Mm -hmm. The kind of remakes that I want to see are games that are unaffordable because of the software or the original hardware is hard to obtain, unaffordable. Sure. And games that are just too clunky control-wise in 2019. Yeah. By the way, welcome back to the VG Bros. It's been VG a while. Bros. I'm yeah. Phil, that's Andy. We're in the off season here. We're not yeah. we're not garage sailing now, but you know, we're still playing games. So just video game remake. You know, we got Final Fantasy VII remake coming out, which I think is great. The original Final Fantasy VII is uh, kind of clunky to play. It's rough today. around the edges. I know. I downloaded it on Switch when it came out. I and, did too. And I started playing it, and I was like, yeah. man, I don't know, man. It's it's rough around the edges. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, we had the Link's Awakening remake come out, which is fun. It was great. Kind of unnecessary. I agree. The original game is super affordable, and it's pretty accessible to play. I think it's on the 3DS eShop if you really wanted to play yeah. it. And the new Switch one, it's great. I bought it. It's it's fun. But I, I agree, it's it's unnecessary. The game wasn't broken to begin with. Mm -hmm. It wasn't it's not super expensive or hard to find. It's not inaccessible. It doesn't have wonky 3D controls that you can't really play in 2019. It doesn't have any of that. It's kind of an unnecessary remake. Well, let's talk about our first game on the list because this is probably the first and the most important game for us that we want to see remade. <clears throat> So this is it. It's Morrowind. It's Elder Scrolls 3. I have so many great memories playing this game. In 2003, I think, two or three when this game came out, I had never heard of it. I was a console gamer my entire life. And my friend Jeremy, who was really into PC games, I was talking to him and he said, he knew I had an Xbox and he knew this game just came out for the Xbox. And he said, dude, you have to get Morrowind. And I said, Moro what? And he said, Morrowind for Xbox. <laughs> More of what? <laughs> yeah. I, I never heard of it. I was under my radar. I don't know. I was playing Halo at the time. I don't know what to tell you. But he said, it's Elder Scrolls 3. The first two were PC games, and they're awesome, and this is even better. You have to get this. And he just kind of forced me to get it. I wasn't really planning on it. But I said, okay. I trusted him. I trusted his judgment, and I got it. And I just absolutely loved this game. Um, it was unlike anything I'd ever played before. I thought I was really cool and hip on my RPG knowledge and whatnot because I had played a bunch of JRPGs, basically. This was the first Western RPG I think I ever played. Mm. And I, I just, I loved it so much. The, the music, the, the freedom that it gives you. I love everything about it. When you first start playing this game, you start walking around. There's a guy that falls out of the sky and, and lands and, and falls to his death. <laughs> And then when you go up to him and search his corpse, he has the um, levitation spell scroll as one of his items. So it's like, okay, he was learning to levitate, screwed it up, <laughs> and fell to his death. Little things like That's that. It's so great. It's so great. Little things like that really put, set this game apart. However. Let's fast forward. In 2019, Morrowind is virtually unplayable on Xbox. And a PC, I'm sure there's been patches and stuff, and it's probably fine. But for us console gamers, it's it's dude, this is rough. It is so buggy. It crashes so much. Even back in the day, you had to. There was no auto save. You just had to save all the time because a game would just constantly crash on you, yeah. all the time. Um, 
The graphics are rough, a lot of foggy background. And again, I'm sure there's PC patches that fixed all this, but I'm not talking about PC. I'm talking about Xbox console Morrowind is what I want remade. It's, it's such a great core game. There's so much content there. It's so good. And, you know, there's, there's even more, like, just quality of life improvements they could make to this game. Give us some more fast travel, right? I mean, it sort of had fast travel, but mm. if I remember correctly, you could only do it from one mage's guild to another mage's guild. And they weren't everywhere. They weren't in every town. And so it took a lot of walking to get to a mage's guild if you wanted to fast travel. And it's a huge map. I mean, it's an Elder Scrolls game, so it's a huge map, right? I mean, we all played Skyrim. We understand what that means. Um, yeah, fix the graphics up a little. Fix the bugs. And they don't even have to improve the graphics that much. I mean, they can if they want, and they probably would, but they don't need an overhaul so much as they just need better draw distance <laughs> and not so much, you know, pop-up and... and technical kind of the entire fixes. game looks like silent hill because of the yeah. fog yeah it looks like an n64 game i mean really yeah. like, it's like turok yeah right or T talk too it yeah. does yeah yeah but underneath all that it's such a great game and i want to play it again so bad yeah but i just can't bring myself to play this version again because i know i'm just gonna get these are the kind of remakes it. that we're talking about underneath all that there's a really great game yes. and that's what we want in 2019 yes yeah yeah, this right. is why Link's Awakening didn't need a remake. Exactly. Underneath all that? <laughs> underneath what? It was, all, it was always great. All right. Now, the next game on our list is not necessarily a game. I'm talking about PlayStation 1 RPGs. Mm. All of them. Okay, we're getting Final Fantasy VII. We talked about that. It's coming next year sometime. Yeah. Great. Yeah, so I missed out on a lot of PS1 RPGs. I had some. I had the Squaresoft ones. I had the Final Fantasy games. I had Xenogears. And I had, I think I played Ark the Lad. It didn't really connect with me. Wild Arms. Wild Arms. I, my, I borrowed that from our neighbors and I played that. And that was fun. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of them that I missed out on. Um, games like Valkyrie Profile. And these games are very expensive right now. And they're hard to find. I mean, outside of emulation, how do you play Valkyrie Profile without forking out $100? This is kind of stuck on that system. They had an opportunity, like when the PlayStation Classic came out a year ago, to include some of these RPGs. They didn't. We got Wild Arms and Final Fantasy VII, which is like, oh, okay. Now, how do you play these games? So I want to play. I want to go back and play. I want to play Xenogears again. I haven't played Xenogears in twenty years. Mm -hmm. I want to play these games again. I just, I don't know how to do it. Well, and Xenogears is a fairly expensive game, but Legend of Dragoon. Legend of Ligaia, um, Final Fantasy, you know, seven, eight, nine. Those are not expensive games. Not really. Chrono Cross is not that expensive. Yeah. But the problem is they haven't aged well. They're so clunky to play. I mean, there's a lot of tank controls in these games. I mm. hate tank controls. I hate it. A lot of just quality of life improvements is what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. so, um, PlayStation One controller before Dual Shock just had basic up, down, left, right, and so there's tank controls on everything. It's so hard to play those games. Um, Dude, it's it's a mess. I mean, yeah. And I'm and I've got a whole library full of these things now because of all the garage sale that I've done. And I keep yeah. thinking, oh yeah, I want to play Legend of the Gaia. I want to play Threads of Fate. You know, whatever the game is, and I put it in. I'm just like, you know, I always do this. I get a half hour into it, and I'm just like, I can't do this. I, yeah. I just can't do this. I've been spoiled by modern controls. Yep. It is what it is, folks. I'm old and I'm spoiled. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. It's the next game That's on my fair. list. The next game on my list is not one game, but three games. Now, I love the Legend of Zelda series as much mm. as anybody. We're huge Zelda fans. But in the late 2000s, every Legend of Zelda game had to have gimmicky controls because the Wii was a motion-based system. So we got Skyward Sword full of really precise motion controls. And then we got the handheld game, Spirit Tracks and Phantom Hourglass. And these games are all about using the stylus to control your character. Um, these three games underneath that, I'm sure are excellent. I haven't finished e any of them. I played all of them a bit, didn't finish any of them. Um, I want these remade so bad. I would pay an irresponsible amount of money yeah. to have Skyward Sword remade on the Switch with modern dual stick controls yep. without motion. 
Yeah. I, I want to so bad, and I really hope Nintendo is working on this right now, and I think they'd be crazy not to. This was the gimmick generation, right? Nintendo's hardware, both the handheld and console hardware, all had gimmicky controls. And I love the DS, I really do. And there's a lot of great games on the DS that didn't rely too much on it. But for some reason, when they made Zelda games, somebody in charge said, you have to incorporate this into this game. And Wii games are all, all like, I mean, most Wii, we've talked about this oh. before. I'm not a huge fan of the Wii. I just don't like the motion controls. I don't know. Call me crazy. I want to sit on my couch with a conventional controller and just, dude, controllers these days have so many buttons. If you can't figure out how to make a game using all these buttons, you're doing it wrong. We don't need additional, like, oh, wear your arm out. Like, dude, at the time... The Wii was selling like hotcakes, and it was hard to argue with how it was selling, and they said, well, it must be because of the motion controls, and therefore, put them in every game. I don't have anything to back this up, but I think that Satoru Iwata was the guy behind all that. Yeah. He was a big proponent of the, of the DS, and that was his job, but um, he really was... I, I think he was the guy behind the curtain at Nintendo that was calling the shots when it came to all these games that were coming out, because... They shoved it into everything. And it got to a point where it was like, I, there's a mandate here, right? Because I, I can't imagine that the developers behind Skyward Sword were developing this game thinking to themselves, I can't wait to implement this thing where you have to twist the remote around like this and do all these. I don't think that's what they really wanted. I think they were following orders from the wizard behind the curtain. I think it was Iwata. And, you know, God rest his soul. And he did a lot of great things for Nintendo. He did. But I think this was, I think he went too far in these areas. He was, he was great, but not everything he did was a home run. He had, he had some swing and misses, including the Wii U. You know, I, there was an Awada Asks that I was listening to where he was being interviewed. And he said when the Wii U was launching, he really thought that Nintendo Land was going to be the new Wii Sports. He said, this is the game that's going to be in every living room that everybody's going to be playing just like Wii Sports was. How'd that work out? Swing and a miss. Nintendo Land? <laughs> it's probably the least valuable <laughs> Wii game, Wii U game out there. I mean, nobody cares about that game. So I guess next on our list is Knights of the Old Republic. Probably one and two. I never played two. I got one back in the day because I was really playing Morrowind at the time and I was into I was like, okay, these next gen RPGs are more sophisticated. And this is this this is my jam now. I'm in. This is what I want, yeah. right? And I heard good things about Knights of the Old Republic. I really did. And I'm a huge Star Wars fan. Full disclosure, we both are. I always have been. Huge Star Wars fan. Huge. And I thought, this is just a slam dunk, right? Open world, Morrowind-ish RPG. That's, it's, it's like the game was made for you and me. That's what I thought. Mm -hmm. And I got it, and I started playing it. I was just like, I'm man. the same way. I this thought it was rough to play back then. Yes. Now, oh boy. It's I mean, rough. I recorded some footage. I mean, just take a look at, at walking around in this environment. You lock onto something. I mean, look at this. You, you're trying to lock <laughs> onto that, and it's just the camera's going like crazy. It's going like this. And in 2019, I can't play a game like that. I just See, can't do it. Morrowind controlled like Halo. Which I was playing a ton of Halo at yeah. the time. And so to me, that was just a smooth transition. I was just no problem at all. I put that controller in my hand immediately. Yes, I get it. I, I'm in. This is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And then I tried to play Knights of the Old Republic. And I was like, wow, this is rough. And you're right. This was rough 15 years ago. And now I, I can't even imagine. It's But underneath all that is very Star Wars-y and it's RPG. And it's probably really good. The game was well received at the time. A lot of people liked it. So I, I want to play it. I want to experience that joy that people had. I do too. But... I can't Especially do it, in an era where we have all this Star Wars content that really isn't any good, in yeah. our opinion. Um, yeah. The, movies and TV shows and whatnot. Um, let me experience something good in the Star Wars universe. I would love to experience this, but I'm not playing it in this yeah. version. And I never did play the second one, so I don't know. Maybe they improved on a lot of that stuff. I don't know. Either way, give us both of these remade. Why not? Please. Better controls. Okay, next on our list, I don't have anything to show you, but the Working Designs games 
that came out on the Sega CD, Sega Saturn, and to some extent the PS1, the PS2. Yeah. We're talking about Lunar, Vi, there were some others. I don't know. We found one. My our sister found mm. Vi at a uh, garage or estate sale this year. Yeah. You can check out her video on that. Yeah. yeah crazy. Um, but I couldn't even play it. I couldn't even test it. Because I have I don't have that hardware. I mean, you have to have the Sega Genesis and the Sega CD attachment and the the ROM uh, save cart thing. I mean, and the Sega CD has to be reliable and, right. and playable, mm -hmm. which is not easy to do these days. They don't hold up very well over time. Then you have to have a hundred dollars mm -hmm. to fork out for the game. I yeah. mean, there's so many things you have to have just to play one of those. And Lunar is even a lot more expensive than okay. that. Yeah, these games. I mean, there's a lot of, of people on YouTube that I watch that swear by Lunar and just say this is just one of the greatest or the greatest RPG ever made. And based on what I've seen of Lunar, I've never played it. It doesn't look like a game that's really broken. It looks like kind of a, uh, an old Final Fantasy game would look like. Okay. So it, I, I don't see this as clunky controls or anything like that. But it falls into the category of it's not accessible and it's unaffordable in 2019. Yeah. I want it to be accessible and affordable. And if they remake it and they overhaul the graphics, fine. That's, that's fine, too. But I'm not one of these guys that demands that you overhaul sprite-based graphics. Because as I said before, I love sprite-based graphics. Um, but I would love to see those working designs games. I don't even know. Whatever happened to working designs, they probably got bought up and sold and bought up again a hundred times like every other developer back I have, then. I have no idea what happened. Someone to must own the rights to that. I wonder who does. Can't really talk too much about those games because I never played them. I never I have to. either. Yeah, Panzer Dragoon Saga is the next one on our list. And again, it's... It came out for the Sega CD, CD or Saturn. Saturn, I believe, right? Was it the Saturn? Yeah. And it was very well received at the time, and people really liked it. And it was... Panzer Dragoon games were kind of early polygons, and so the mm -hmm. graphic... And the Saturn couldn't compute polygons very well. They didn't look particularly good. Not as good as PlayStation could. And so even at the time... The game looked kind of clunky. I, I can't imagine how well it's held up in 2019. However, there must be a great game underneath that because it's so expensive. And they are remaking Panzer Dragoon. They've announced that, um, which is great. But that's like a rail shooter. That's yeah. not really, you know, there's a million rail shooters out there. The, right. the experience that you get with Panzer Dragoon Saga, yes. that role-playing game, is one that I want to experience in 2019. It must be good. It's unaffordable, though. Yeah. So, I know. please bring this out. Yeah. I don't know who owns that. The next remake that I want to see, that's been rumored forever, is the Metroid Prime Trilogy. Yes. Now, technically, this kind of is a remake in itself, this Wii version, because they took away the original controls that Metroid Prime 1 and 2 had, and they gave it motion controls. And while neither of us are fans of the Wii and the motion controls, as we've talked about a number of times, it really is the only way to play these games. The original control scheme with metroid prime one and two on the game i can't do it it's in 2019 your brain does not operate that way i know every single turn and every single motion that you want to do on that controller your is counterintuitive to what your brain has been programmed to do with video games in 2019 yeah. for two decades now our brains have been programmed with two analog sticks for walking around in a mm -hmm. 3d environment and it's it's the programming is set it's it's set in stone and my brain is now rewired that way and i can't even at the time i talked about this before i was playing halo at the time and i got metroid prime one for gamecube and i could not get used to that control i couldn't do it i was playing too much halo I, my brain just couldn't do it and now it's almost two decades later I guarantee you my brain can't do it. Everything now has the dual analog controls. Every 3D game operates this way. But underneath all that, it's one of the best received games of all time. Really I mean, is. even yeah. when it came out, the game reviewers who could tolerate the controls, my hat's off to you, <laughs> they all loved it. And even to this day, Metroid Prime 1 and 2 are like some of the highest rated games of all time. But I played them both and they're fantastic games. I played this version, but you're right. I would have more success learning how to write with my left hand than I would be to play the original GameCube yep. version of these games. And it's 2019. Bring this out on the Make Switch. Give us those controls. Everybody wants this. N64 games that need to be remade. Which ones? All of them. All of them do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, okay. 
A few of them hold up better than others. Mario 64 holds up remarkably well, considering it was the very first one, and it was one of the first 3D platforming, free roaming kind of games. And it took the rest of the industry 10 years to figure out what Mario 64 figured out the first time around, which is a miracle. But even Mario 64 could use a little help. Can you imagine playing Mario 64 with Mario Odyssey controls? It'd be so good. I want that so bad. I know. (laughs) And so Zelda, Ocarina of Time, and Majora's Mask, those have actually both seen remakes on the 3DS, which are great versions of those games. Although I'd really rather have them on a big screen at this point in my life. Yeah. Just saying. Um, Other Um, games, uh, Mario Kart 64, I would love to see remade. Give it that real tight control that we see with newer Mario Kart games. Because Mario Kart 64 is a game that is just, is so beloved by so many people. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the last Mario Kart games to really challenge the player and reward you for your skills. And what I mean by that is is Mario Kart 8, uh, every track is just massively wide. You can't fall off a track. You have to try to fall off a track in Mario Kart 8. And even if you're good enough to get ahead of everybody and be in first place, you're just going to get bombarded with blue shells and you're going to end up in seventh place. They don't really reward you that much for being better than everybody else. The skill becomes to try to maintain seventh or eighth place up until like the last stretch of the final course. Like that's kind of what people end up doing. And it's like, is this really what we want? And then you get the star, you turn into the big bullet bill and then you... Yeah. Clobber your way into first place and then go through the goal. And I mean, Double Dash really is the first Mario Kart that really started that. Like, I remember playing Double Dash and it was like, where are all these blue turtle shells coming from? I didn't remember blue, blue turtle shells <sighs> being so this common before. But it's like, yeah, you're really good. You're a very skilled player. You know how to take those tight corners. You know how to do that thing where you jump and you get the boost around you know around the corner kind of thing the the slide what do they call power slides or whatever Mm -hmm. and then you get bombarded with blue shells and on the last lap and you end up in seventh place oh so much so much for being good yeah in mario kart 64 there were so many areas so many levels where there were suddenly two paths to take one was easier yeah one was more challenging but quicker you got rewarded now the challenging part i mean you had to really practice some of those tracks turn really thin for a while and and you had to you know and you had to turn you're going really fast and you fell off even when you were good you just fell off a lot Mm -hmm. and when you fall off i mean you know game over you're not going to come in first place most of the time when you fall off a track it takes forever for the cloud to pick you up put you back and there are a lot of spots like that in the Mario Kart 64 version. And I just, I miss that. We, we just don't have that today mm. at all with Mario Kart games. The modern Mario Karts are made for a more mass audience kind of thing. If you're not very good, they want you to still have a chance at coming in, you know, first or second place kind of thing. But meanwhile, players like us who are very good and very skilled are like, man, this is... This is kind of a bummer. I'm not being rewarded for being good, you know? I don't know. Let's talk about GoldenEye. I I personally don't think that a remake is entirely necessary today. Yeah, people love the game, but that experience of that first-person shooter, I I mean, there's a million different first-person shooters out there, and I just don't think that experience is really missing in 2019. But if they remade the game, uh, which they won't, there's too many licensing issues, but if they did, I'd be okay with it. Uh, I'd rather have Perfect Dark remade, personally. Mm -hmm. Give it some modern controls, some 2019 controls with a dual dual analog. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a great game to be had there. I really like Perfect Dark. I like it better than Goldeneye. Yeah. The single player campaign, anyway. Yeah. I don't know, did Perfect Dark have multiplayer? Of course. I don't even remember. Yeah. I remember the co-op multiplayer, which was a blast. Yes. But But was there a... Battle they, Royale type thing? They like, did, and I remember it because they introduced the bots, which were like these computer-controlled enemies just kind of running around, so you I could... Know. Well, I don't remember that. I Honestly, don't know. I don't think all... I had any friends when it came out. <laughs> it was at that age where everybody was off at college Everyone all over the place. Everyone left in different parts of the world, and yeah. you were, you know... I didn't have any friends. I don't yeah. Know. But, again, it was 
the first 3D Nintendo system where they had this 3D capability and the designers were still figuring stuff out. Yeah. They were still trying to figure out how does this work? What is it? How does a character move around in a 3D environment? All right, the next remake that I want to see are the Silent Hill games. Now, there's a lot of Silent Hill games. I own the second one. Um, I've heard a lot of really great things about this game. I mean, some of my friends have just told me this is just one of their favorite games ever and that I really need to play this. And I have tried to play this. And let me tell you, it's clunky. It is so 2004 clunky. I don't know when this came out, but I mean... You know what I'm talking about. We've already talked about games like Knights of the Old yeah. Republic and how that's aged. And, I mean, it took me forever just to get out of the bathroom in the very first scene of the game. I mean, it's really clunky. Oh, I hate those controls. Oh, oh, oh. it's just painful. Uh, and then you, there is a way to change the control scheme, which I did, which helped a little bit. Um, but it doesn't take away the the, the tankness of the controls. Uh, and then you, that's you, pain. That hurts to watch, I, man. I know, oh. I know. And then you get out. And it's a very foggy game, which the fog is intentional in this game to give it that eerie feeling. But I also feel like, obviously, they're covering up pop-ups with the fog, which sure. is fine. But, you know, underneath all that clunkiness, I'm sure is a great game. But the frustration that you have, not only controlling your character, but just uh, battling these enemies. You, you get this weapon at one point, like a melee weapon, and you go up to these enemies and you're supposed to conk them over the head. And I can't tell you how many times uh, it just doesn't work. You go up to them. <laughs> what? I know, oh, it's so I, clunky. Uh, and you're you're trying to hit him over the head and I'm sitting I'm pushing the attack button over and over again. Nothing happens. And then they spit acid into my face. Yeah, it's just it's super frustrating. And I rage quit this game so many times. Um and every, I'm going to rage not start that game. <laughs> and remake all of them. I don't know how many Silent Hill games. There must be five or six right now, right? Why do people like to punish them? I don't know. I don't know. Tell me, why do you like this game? Tatted Collector, I'm talking to you. <laughs> you keep talking about how great Silent Hill is. How do you do this? I don't know. Even in 2004, that I would have been like, I dude, know. come on. Yeah. I, I'm used to dual analog. I'm used to can't do good... This. I can't do this. Next on the list, I almost decided to just say the entire TurboGrafx-16 library. I do feel like... I mean, I own a TurboGrafx. I played a lot of the games. They're very playable. I mean, there's most of them. Most of them, you don't really get that clunkiness. This is before 3D graphics took over, um, so that's not my problem. But I want to talk about Easebook One and Two. This is a game that a lot of people um, have grown their YouTube channels just based on this series, right? Um, people really love this series. Now, what you're watching here is me playing this game and battling these enemies. And the way to hit an enemy is to just run right into him. That's how you attack these enemies. It's not fun or satisfying at all. You lose a little bit of life and then it just replenishes slowly. The music is pretty good. I imagine there's a good story behind this and a decent role-playing game, but I would really like to see this game remade. I own it on the Wii Virtual Console, I think is how I recorded the footage. I would really like to see a, re a complete overhaul of this game um, so that we can play it in 2019 and enjoy with it. There has to be a good game there. I guess my first memory of Ease was probably early to mid 90s. I was on some message boards online and this might have been either AOL or maybe even Prodigy. Do you guys remember Prodigy? Prodigy, Like yeah. before AOL? Mm -hmm. And I was really into Final Fantasy 2 and 3 at that time. And so I remember I I found some, I don't know, RPG message boards or something, and and I started talking about how Final Fantasy 3 is my favorite game of all time, or it might have been 2. And someone responded and said, Ease 1 and 2. And he's like, oh, it's better than any Final Fantasy. It's, it's the best game of all time. And... And I thought... No, it isn't. Well, I thought, well, man, what is this game? I have to play it. Like, what, better than Final Fantasy? Like, well, I have to play this game. And, of course, I didn't even know. I, I, I think it was ported to Super Nintendo at one point, but it was... The third game was. The third game was. Yeah, very... And maybe that's another remake that needs to make that needs to happen, because the, the third E is called Wanderers from Ease. In fact, I own it somewhere. Here it is. 
Wanderers from Ease. I've never really put any time into this game, but from what I've heard, you have to grind on the very first level for about an hour in order to actually beat the first level. It's just pure grind fest right. of leveling up. And as a result, it's a pretty broken game for a lot of people. Because who wants to do that? I mean... It's hard to start your game out like really grindy like that. Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe maybe I loop this game in with Easebook 1 and 2 as yeah. uh, games that need remakes. But. Yeah. I, I've never played one, but uh -huh. I've always wanted to because of what that guy told me back in, like, prodigy message boards. <laughs> like, this is better than Final Fantasy. It's and I was like, what? what? I don't know if we have any honorable mentions. I thought about the Tomb Raider series. I mean, they've remade a lot of those early Resident Evil games, which is great, because those are totally broken, those old ones. So yeah. um, they're doing that justice. They're remaking the Resident Evil games. But And I thought, oh, they should do the same thing with those old Tomb Raider games. But then I thought, you know, they kind of have. Yeah. Because the modern Tomb Raider games are so perfect in their playability and accessibility, and they're so much fun. And I feel like we're more or less getting that experience that we would have yeah. had with they're, the first Tomb Raider games. Yeah, they're 100 times better, yeah. and they're playable. And Tomb Raider, I missed the first Tomb Raider when it first came out. Tomb Raider 2 came out, and I had a PlayStation, and I read a review in That's Game cool. Players Magazine, I want to say, and they said, best game of the year, Tomb Raider 2. Mm. And I was like, all right, I... I'm 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 Shut in. Shut up and take my money. Yep. Uh, you know, this is why I subscribed to video game magazines. So they can tell me what the best games are. Because I didn't have enough money to buy a bunch of games and be let down by the bad ones. Right, right? You're going to fork out $60 so, for a new game. Dude, you need to be certain that that's money well spent. Yeah. And when I was a kid or a teenager, like $60 was a lot of money. Mm. And you're right. You had to make sure it was well spent. That's why I got all these magazines to tell me what to buy. Mm -hmm. And that usually worked really well. But... They said Tomb Raider 2 is the best game of the year, and I got that thing, and man, I I tried. I put a lot of time into it, and I don't know how far I got. I don't think I ever beat it. I don't remember beating it, but On the surface, man, it's rough. Those tank controls, and I could never do it. Dude, it is. Just watching like a Let's Play of Tomb Raider 2, you just want to blow your brains out. It's frustrating just to watch somebody else do it. It's so painful. To try to do it yourself, but I really liked the the theme, the the visual style. I liked the setting. It was very kind of Indiana Jones y. Mm -hmm. It reminded me of the Last Crusade when they're in Italy and they're you know chasing people on a boat. Those old like wooden boats. Like That's Laura great. Croft used the same kind of boat in Tomb Raider too, and mm -hmm. and I really liked that and i think there was even like an archaeological aspect to it i don't remember what the story was it's been a long time since i played that game so cut me some slack but i liked all that i really wanted to like the game but oh man it's rough it's hard to play to totally unplayable it, it was unplayable it. back then in 2019 i mean Dude. come on so that's the end of our list i don't know what you think what are some games that you want to see remade in 2019 but Definitely. i want to play spirit tracks and i don't want to do it on the ds exactly so give me that game yes please fix the broken games yes that's basically what it comes down to is that the end yeah okay okay